Well, Betacolic acid was approved uh, for use in the United States in May of 2016 in combination with ursodeoxycholic acid in adults who have an in inadequate response to ursodeoxycholic acid or who are unable to tolerate ursodeoxycholic acid. Obeticolic acid is a Farnesoid X receptor agonist. Let's start our discussion about this new treatment option by first reviewing the role of the FXR receptor in regulating bile acids. So it's important to remember that bile acids are not just detergents that help absorb fat. Uh, cholesterol is the precursor for bile acids from which they are converted uh, by biochemical changes in the liver, and bile acids are key in helping us absorb fat. Uh, bile acids uh, interact with the FXR receptor. So, uh, Kinodeoxycholic acid has a small amount of agonism for the FXR receptor. Uh, bile acids are then secreted into bile and also uh, potentially interact through FXR through the microbiome. And finally, bile acids are reabsorbed as enterohepatic hormones through the enterohepatic circulation in the terminal ileum, where FGF19 uh, via FXR agonism can also play a role as an endocrine hormone in regulating liver metabolism and have many pleiotropic effects on inflammation, fibrogenesis, and cholerotic pathways. This slide shows how the FXR receptor signals and has a variety of downstream actions. So bile acids are the primary ligands for this receptor, which is a nuclear hormone receptor. They're expressed, uh, if not ubiquitously, very widely. And their key effects are increased gene expression of BCEP and multi-drug multi resistant genes, and a central effect of FXR agonism is suppression of gene expression of CYP7A or cytochrome P457A1. These have, this has direct effects in increasing bile acid efflux and reducing bile acid synthesis and uptake. So it's a two hit concept to reduce cholerotic liver damage and promote excretion of bile acids, which can be toxic in, uh, in the liver if they accumulate. So with this rationale, the FOIS trial, which was a phase three trial that led to the approval uh, of abeticolic acid for treatment with PBC, uh, was designed to evaluate three arms, a placebo arm, a 10 milligram arm, and an arm that started with five milligrams of abeticolic acid and then up titrated at six months to either five milligrams or 10 milligrams, depending on response. Entry criteria included an alkaline phosphatase greater than 1.67 times the upper limit of normal and or a bilirubin greater than upper limit of normal, but less than twice the upper limit of normal. So these were the patients that hopefully, as we are all familiar with, would be classified using all of the response models as being a higher risk patient for increased liver-related outcomes over time. Response was defined on a composite endpoint of at least a 15% reduction of alkaline phosphatase, maintaining an alkaline phosphatase less than 1.67 times the upper limit of normal, and a bilirubin less than the upper limit of normal. This slide shows the primary result of the POIS trial. As can be seen, patients who were treated with obeticolic acid, both in the titrated arm and in the 10 milligram arm at 12 months, had a higher likelihood of achieving this response composite endpoint at a rate of about 47 to 48%, which was significantly higher than in the group treated with placebo. Interestingly, although the clinical significance of this may not be quite as clear, uh, there was a significant reduction even in serum bilirubin. Uh, however, the scale here is in micromoles per liters. Um, but interestingly, the placebo patient showed a, uh, an increase, whereas the treated patient showed a decrease. In addition to the key phase three study that I just reviewed, uh, several phase two and three international trials have been conducted to 
evaluate a variety of different doses of abeticholic acid and to determine the efficacy and safety of both monotherapy as well as combination therapy with ursodeoxycholic acid. And in these studies, abeticholic acid showed um, if efficacy not only in patients treated with combination therapy, but also in patients treated with monotherapy. And the analyses that I'm describing here will have similar changes, except for not using the POIS primary endpoints, but just look at change from baseline of alkaline phosphatase, bilirubin, et cetera. This composite slide shows the number of patients who, with a post hoc analysis, achieved the composite endpoint in the phase two studies and in the phase three studies. And as can be shown, both the patients in the phase two studies of monotherapy and with combination therapy in comparison to patients who were treated in the phase three studies were likely to achieve the primary composite endpoint. This slide shows the change in alkaline phosphatase in the obeticholic acid international trials. And as you can see, the percentage uh, change and absolute change in alkaline phosphatase would be greatest in patients who are on monotherapy uh, as expected. And that is what is shown in this slide. The patients in the phase two monotherapy study had a reduction in alkaline phosphatase of almost 300 units per liter whereas in patients who are already on ursodeoxycholic acid and had already achieved a reduction in alkaline phosphatase with ursodeoxycholic acid showed relatively smaller absolute reductions in alkaline phosphatase. Consistent with our thinking that obeticholic acid may have direct anti-inflammatory effects uh, and have favorable effects on necroinflammation in the liver, and possibly secondary favorable effects due to reduction of cholestatic liver injury from bile acids, you can see that liver enzymes, ALT and AST, showed reductions in the phase two studies as well in the phase three studies. Expected on-target effect of abeticholic acid is an alteration in lipid profile, particularly with a reduction in HDL cholesterol and a possible increase in LDL cholesterol. And consistent with this expected side effect, there was a reduction in HDL cholesterol and an increase in LDL cholesterol. But in absolute terms, these are not dramatically different. Um, and it is important to keep in mind that although the long-term effects on lipids with obeticholic acid should be watched, and patients should be monitored with regard to whether they need intervention with a statin. Um, the profile of the typical PBC patient is characterized by high levels of HDL, uh, and generally they have lower rates of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, nevertheless, the change in lipid values um, is a consistent finding, and LDL and HDL cholesterol should be monitored in patients who are treated with obeticholic acid. What do the adverse events look like for the obeticholic acid international trials? Well, five patients uh, who are on placebo and eight patients who are on 10 milligrams of obeticholic acid, which is four and 6% reported at least one treatment emergent serious adverse event. Uh, none in the 10 milligram group were considered drug related. The main side effect of abeticholic acid, which is a dose limited side effect, uh, is pruritus. Uh, most pruritus treatment emergent adverse events generally are mild or moderate in severity. And a way to mitigate the symptomatic or severe pruritus in these patients is to start at the five milligram dose and titrate up to 10 milligrams as shown in the POIS trial. Interestingly, with this approach, fewer than 1% of patients had to discontinue abeticholic acid due to severe pruritus compared to almost 10% 10% in the group that started 10 milligrams. Much higher rates of pruritus have been reported in patients receiving 25 and 50 milligrams per day, but those doses are not part of the recommended uh, advice, advisable dose to start with in patients with PBC. 
What about drug interactions with the beta-cholic acid? The beta-cholic acid should be taken at least four hours before or after binding bile acid sequestrants because these will bind obeticolic acid and other drugs. There has been uh, evidence to suggest that uh, there may be decreased INR, and so patients on warfarin should have their pro-time monitored. And patients uh, who are treated with CYP1A2 substrates with a narrow therapeutic window or narrow therapeutic index should be monitored because of a reduced clearance of CYP1A2 substrates.